Welcome to night number 78 of History Bedtime Stories. We're in bed, we're in our pajamas, and tonight we're talking about the late, great Dr. Charles H. Wright. Charles H. Wright, like so many phenomenal Detroiters, wasn't born here. He was born in Dothan, Alabama on September 20th, 1918. He goes on to attend college and receive his undergraduate degree from Alabama State College and later attends the Meharry Medical School, where he graduates with his degree as a medical doctor. He serves out his internship at the Harlem Hospital of New York, and while there, he's not able to study his first choice, which was gynecology and obstetrics. Because of that, he goes into general medicine, and when he finishes an internship, he comes to Detroit in 1946. From 1946 to 1950, he practices general medicine here, in the city. And when the Harlem Hospital calls him in 1950, offering him a position in his number one choice, number one field, obstetrics, OBGYN specialties, gynecology, and general surgery, he decides to go back and complete another series of internships at the Harlem Hospital in New York. When he graduates, he comes again back to Detroit, and he literally becomes the busiest man I have ever researched. He goes on to be, in the next 30 years, an emeritus attending at Harper Grace Hospital, a senior attending at Sinai Hospital, a clinical professor at Wayne State University's College of Medicine, a attending physician at Hunsell Hospital, and on top of all of this, he writes seven books. He helps found the African um, uh, American Medical Education Fund, which is a scholarship program inside the Detroit Medical Society. He founds the Museum of African American History inside his office on West Grand Boulevard here in Detroit. He works with the NAACP. He is a unbelievably brave civil crusader volunteering to go with Freedom Riders as a physician into Louisiana in 1965 to provide medical care should the protesters and Freedom Riders need it due to counter protests and police brutality. He is a humanitarian whose efforts extend far beyond the United States of America. He goes to West Africa and works with midwifery and vaccines to help provide better childhoods for children in that nation. He serves above the ship, the USS Hope, in Colombia, offering much the same care to the people of Colombia. And through this all, he continues to build his museum. First, with the help of his first wife, uh, Louisa Lovett, who sadly predeceases him after being the mother of the couple's two children and an act of an integral part of founding the original museum. He later would remarry Roberta Hughes and the two would remain married until departed by death. But through two marriages, seven books, working at every hospital in town, he founds this museum in his little hospital office on West Grand Boulevard. And he quickly outgrows that space. So in 1965, he gets together 30 influential community leaders and they fundraise to open in 1978 the Detroit African American History Museum. And I should say that the land for that original museum was actually given by the city of Detroit. From 1978 to 1997, they operate out of this building, but they outgrow it. And when they do, the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit puts a bond, a millage on ballots here in the state, in the city. That bond allows all taxpayers to contribute to the founding of what will become the largest African-American history museum on the planet when it opens in 1997 in Detroit's cultural district, right by the Detroit Institute of Arts, the Detroit Science Center, the Scarab Club, and the College for Creative Studies. The museum is opened in 1997 and it has a new name. It's called the Charles H. Wright African-American History Museum. Dr. Wright leaves a legacy in the city of Detroit after his death in 2002 and his burial at Detroit's Elmwood Cemetery of activism, humanitarianism, and a doctor's oath to care for everyone and do no harm. I hope you are enjoying History Bedtime Stories. If you are, 
First, we want to encourage you when everything reopens to check out the Charles H. Wright African American History Museum. It's awesome. But we also want to encourage you down in the comment section below to tell us about your favorite, most inspired by Detroit African American people of history. If you do, we will enter you in a random drawing later this week and we'll award a whole bunch of City of Detroit vinyl stickers to whoever participates. Wash your hands. We'll see you tomorrow night.